Good afternoon, Michael Leonard here. I uh, just wanted to share this audit with you. As you can see here, I'm on your website and there are six areas that I'm going to cover in this video. If there's something that you don't catch, don't worry too much. Uh, I'll include a summary in the email that I send over. And so I just want to go ahead and get started. Uh, so with the, the first part, some of the things that you're doing really well. And I must say you have a really nice website. I think we met back in, uh, yeah, November 2017. So just to see the progress you made over the years, very inspiring. Uh, one thing I noticed, looks like there might be some overlap with the text here. So maybe just sort that out. I'm not sure if that's my browser. I'm using Chrome. But make sure you sort that part out. Uh, other than that, very good job uh, getting press and coverage on these major platforms. Uh, very good and definitely adds to your credibility, as I'm sure you know. I actually listened to the Knowledge for Men podcast, so that, that's awesome. Now, one thing you might want to do, uh, make sure that you link out to each of these different websites. Uh, I think much of the discussion about SEO and link building are the backlinks that you have going to your website. But it's just as powerful to uh, link out to powerful websites, too, especially if they're relevant, like all of these websites are. So I would link directly from these badges if possible. And then I see your different course offerings. And yeah, I think very good job overall. Um, you just might want to check some of these uh, the HTML codes. Looks like there might be a typo or something. So just spend some time cleaning that up. But other than that, really good, really good. Uh, something else that I really like is you're very involved on social media. And that's great. Uh, so definitely keep up the great work there. And I actually have some things I think will help you kind of take that to the next level in 2019. Now, to the fun part, uh, some areas that I see for opportunity and for improvement. And so first, I'm actually going to start with your on-page SEO optimization. So I use a tool called SEM Rush, basically, it gives, it a, gives you a very easy to understand and interpret a report about some of the things that are going on with your website. So this is the audit that I ran for your website. As you can see, you have an overall score of 55%, 95 errors, 757 warnings, and uh, over 1,700 notices. So I wouldn't be too worried uh, about the warnings and notices. Uh, sometimes those things are false positives. Sometimes they're just kind of, did you know this about your website? But I would be concerned with these errors. And don't worry about um, catching any of these during the video. I'm going to actually send you a report of all the errors uh, in the email. So, uh, yeah, so we just click through, to see what that 95 is all about. You know, if I had to kind of wrap this up into, you know, one issue I'm seeing and it's saying like it's giving it different different labels, but there are quite a few broken links on your website. So you see 44 internal images are broken, 15 internal links are broken, nine pages return the uh, 4XX status code, which is uh, technical speak for a broken link. And then you also have some broken internal JavaScript and CSS files. Uh, other than that, uh, there's some redirect chains and loops. So somewhere you set up a redirect, a 301 redirect, and for some reason it's taking a long time to get to the desired destination page. Uh, other than that, you need to take a look at some of your technical SEO. Might be some issues with your sitemap, and there also might be some issues with slow load speed on a few pages. But other than that, um, you know, I would say I would definitely spend some time cleaning these issues up as kind of my first priority because this isn't the most exciting part of SEO, I understand. But I look at your online business as a house, right? And for any online business, your website is going to be your foundation. And when you have little issues like this, you know, maybe one or two of them won't have a dramatic impact. But when you kind of add up all of these, um, it can definitely detract from the visibility 
and the authority potential that your website has. So that's why I always start off with any SEO campaign, kind of going back to the basics and cleaning up some of these issues. Now, on top of that, of course, you had those warnings and, and uh, notices. I won't go too much into that because I think these should definitely be your priority. Now, going back to your website, uh, some of your meta tags. So your meta tags, for example, your page title is this little box that just popped up here. So it says home hyphen inspire your success online business plus success habits. So I would actually take out that home part and instead I would actually, you know, use something that's more keyword optimized. So I have a few of your keywords, how to become a freelance writer, how to make money online and so on. You know, maybe something more general like how to make money online would be a better fit here. So anytime you see that where it's like home or something really generic, you always want to take the opportunity to include something that's more keyword optimized because that's really what's going to help your website rank better and improve your rankings. Now, so now that we're finished with that part, I'm going to talk a little bit what's called a SEO content silo. And before I load up uh, the page on your website, I'm going to go over a very quick example. So this is a simple example of what a content silo would look like if you were drawing it out on a website. So let's say we had a website about power tools. And under power tools, you have cordless power tools, electric power tools, and gas power tools. So let me zoom in here to make sure you can see everything. Okay, and then even under those categories, you have more specific pages. And I'm sorry, you can think of each box as a different page on the website. And under that box, you have the cordless power tools box. You have cordless drills, cordless planners, and cordless hammers. So these will all be specific pages under this larger cordless power tools category. And the same for electric power tools, the same for gas power tools. So when you're looking at your website, so let's just pretend this was uh, how to become a freelance writer. So that's one category on your website. And then under that category, let's go back out here to your main page. Sometimes it loads slowly when I'm sharing. So let's just go back to the freelance writing page. So this would be your main freelance writing page, or even you might want to consider this as your main freelance writing page. So that's going to be what's called your category page. And then under that category page, you're going to have different, uh, these different subtopics. So 50 plus freelance writing jobs online, how to price your freelance rates, and so on. And so basically, each of these are going to be your sub pages under your freelance writing category page. And then the reason why it's called a silo, because when you're looking at this from a website perspective, you're only going to link these articles with other freelance writing related articles. So from your house to start freelance writing article, you wouldn't necessarily want to link to something and that's related to starting a side hustle uh, because it's outside of that content silo. Instead, you want to take the opportunity to link to these other articles that you have here. Now, that sounds like a lot of work. And, you know, one of the things you can do in the meantime until you have a more permanent solution is to actually go in and add those links manually to the other articles within this category. Now, long term, you should strongly consider adding uh, what's called a side category menu. And so I'll go to your how to start freelance writing page so you can see what that would look like. And usually um, side category menu is exactly as it sounds. If you ever looked at a website for a, a department store, uh, Amazon, they do this. It's basically going to be the side menu. And in that side menu, you're going to have, you know, your main freelance writing page. And then you're going to have links to all of your other 
smaller, I want, I want to say smaller, but subtopic pages related to freelance writing. And that way, that's an easy way to have all the links in one place to ensure that you're linking out to them. And then you would pretty much have that same side category menu for each freelance writing page. And that would establish your, your, your content silo. Uh, other than that, you, know, you would have a different category menu for your blogging in your, in a different category menu for your site hustle, uh, related pages. And that's just one way to add more topical relevancy to your website for the different target keywords that you're going after. Now I know that's, you know, I'm not sure if you ever heard of the content silo, but I'll make sure to share an article. I think it's probably the best article online. If you really want to dig deep into that and figure out how you can uh, implement that on your website. And then of course, I'm always here to answer any questions that you have. Now, and that's your own page SEO. So we have five more categories to go. So and before I move on, uh, just to show you some other things I looked at. Uh, so your Google schema, or I should say your JSON LD schema, uh, is very good. And looks like I have to reload it here. There it goes. Stop. Okay. So these are the different schema types of schema that are installed on your website, which is great. The only other type that I would consider adding if I were you is the person schema. Because as I, I imagine, when you're going on these different podcasts or being featured in these different articles, your name is out there front and center. So someone might not necessarily Google uh, your, your business name, but they might Google your name. And schema is a way for you to uh, connect your, your name with your online brand. And that's just one way, you know, someone who's reading an article, they see your company uh, mentioned, they, they might know automatically, but remember search engines, they're, they're smart, smart robots at the end of the day. And so you don't talk, the way you talk to a robot, to a computer is through code. And that schema, that snippet is that code that will tell that robot, that computer who is crawling your website, that Michael Leonard is directly linked to inspire your success. So anytime someone searches for Michael Leonard, uh, you should definitely be bringing up results for inspire your success. And usually you can manage all of this, all of this through a plugin. If uh, you, you don't have any plugins installed, we can definitely uh, figure out something for you where you can get that schema added. So just let me know on that part. And then I also checked your website speed. And so very good, actually. So you have a performance grade of a C, but your load time is really, really good. It's 1.78 seconds. Usually my benchmark is two to three seconds, but in, and obviously you're under that. So, you know, if you wanted to just really be an overachiever on this part, um, there are a few things that are low hanging fruit. You can compress the components of GZIP and you can add expires headers uh, to, to your website. Now, these are things I'll highly recommend working with a developer to fix. Usually they can knock these types of things out very quickly. Uh, but I'll share a screenshot of this report uh, so you can have the information you need to move forward. And then finally, I did a, for the technical optimization review, I did a check of your website speed. It all came, or I'm sorry, your, your, your website's mobile friendliness, and it all came back looking good. So, uh, yeah, this is something that I would just do spot checks from time. So maybe if you, you know, your mobile phone on, you know, one of, one of your loved ones or friends' mobile phones, just check out how your website looks on different devices. Um, cause sometimes, you know, you might miss something and it might not show up in one of these tests, but you'll look at it and instantly you'll realize, oh, that looks, that doesn't look very good. So definitely something to stay vigilant about, you know, as you move on. Now, so we're going over your on-page SEO, your technical SEO. Now it's time to look at your off-page SEO. And just to give you an idea of what I looked at, um, so basically for the first step, I did a, you know, a scan of all the backlinks that are linking back to your website. So I'll refresh this. So 
I must say, very good job, sir, on getting some great backlinks. Uh, you have some some heavy hitters here. Uh, so just keep up the good work there. And I'm sure that's because you're putting out great content that people are finding helpful. Uh, but, you know, the one metric that I look at, I'm using Ahrefs. I think the Moz is my metric might be a little more popular. Uh, for Moz, it's called the domain authority. For Ahrefs, it's called the domain rating. But they pretty much measure the same thing, how much authority a particular website has. You can see the higher that number is, the better. You have some 90s, some 80s, some 70s. So very good job there. Um, you know, one idea that you might want to try out in 2019, you know, maybe you do this every month, maybe every quarter, but you might want to do what's called an expert roundup. And basically, you would pose some question to a panel of experts. Um, and, you know, they can be bloggers. They can be people who have excelled in the different courses that you're offering. Uh, you might want to stay away from direct competitors, but, you know, sometimes even they are willing to provide some advice. Uh, but pretty much pose some question to them. Like, you know, here this is a, this is a very generic example, but something like, how to succeed in 2019 as a freelance writer. You know, something, you know, you might want to be more specific than that. And then you would just maybe email, or if you have their phone information, call, you know, a few experts and just ask them that question and ask them for a paragraph. And then once you start getting those responses back, then you would go ahead and, you know, organize the responses. Uh, maybe by theme, so a different, uh, different uh, panelists, if they focus on certain themes, then, you know, that's obviously the way you want to organize it. And then add their image, you know, just to thank them for their, their uh, participation, try to link back to their website. Now, the reason why this is a really good link building strategy is because usually when people are featured, then they're going to share it on their social media. They might even do a short snippet of it on their own website. And that's, of course, all of that attention is really going back to your website. So that's a great strategy I've used for different niches in the past. Um, it's really not expensive at all. It's just a matter of you know, getting those uh, responses and then organizing them in a way that's very readable for your, for your readers. Um, and I'll, I'll share with you an article that goes more in detail about that uh, so you can kind of understand a little bit better the notes and bolts of doing an expert round. And so other than that, um, I did run a report on some of your competitors. So these are just some of the different companies and websites I saw that um, were ranking very well for some of your target keywords. Uh, so, you know, usually a good strategy is just to go after the backlinks or the websites that are linking back to them that aren't linking back to you. And sometimes this isn't always easy, but when you do find those opportunities, you already know that they link back to related websites. So there's a good opportunity for that they will link back to you if you produce the right content asset or have the right pitch. So. Uh, that's something that I, I do recommend that you do. And I'll send you again all of these things from SEM Rush. I'll send you the report so you can see and sort through this yourself. Now, with Ahrefs, um, you know, what I will look at is a combination of the domain score and the trust score. And basically, the domain score, again, is kind of just telling you how much authority a particular website domain has. And trust score uh, just kind of gives you a metric on how trustworthy that website is. And those go hand in hand. And of course, I would prioritize this by going after the, 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 the websites with the highest domain score and the highest trust scores first. And so that's your backlink strategy. Uh, there are many backlink strategies out there. Uh, you know, maybe another one you want to look at is using your free courses as a link magnet. And that'll be a great way for you to get those backlinks. Um, yeah. And so moving on, uh, the next thing I want to talk a bit about is called Barnacle SEO. And this is the idea that, you know, you have very popular websites out there like uh, Medium, for example. You are using a Barnacle strategy on Medium. 
because you're posting content there. And I'm sure you can you understand this, but Medium is a huge website. It's a very popular website. It'll be very difficult for you to rank well in a timely manner or rank higher than Medium. And so with that, for that reason, instead of trying to outrank them, you're posting your content there. Now, for your courses, uh, when I looked at, when I did a competitor analysis, I saw uh, Udemy and I saw Skillshare coming up quite a bit. And these would be other barnacle opportunities. Instead of trying to outrank those courses, what you may want to do instead is try to, you know, get your courses featured on those websites. And, you know, that's definitely what have to work out the economics so that uh, you are, you know, definitely getting uh, your value for the work that you put into those courses. But SEO is not just about rankings. I tell clients this all the time. It's more so about improving your visibility and doing different things to improve your visibility online. And so sometimes that means you set up profiles and offerings on other more, more uh, authoritative websites to get that additional visibility. But definitely something to consider there. Now, number four, and this is uh, very important. You're involved with the FinCon community, so I'm sure you understand it, but content. And one thing I want you to do more often Michael in 2019 is blog. Um, I saw that you do have some blogs on your website, but if you can establish a regular cadence, so maybe once a month starting off, I think that would be a very uh, good way to target some of these long tail keywords and build traffic and visibility. Now, um, usually kind of what we already talked about with the content silo, now I would target those uh, keywords like how to become a freelance writer and then go to go a step deeper look at some of the lsi keywords that are popping up and uh you know write articles that align with those keywords so definitely blog more regularly uh second promote 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 um if i could break down a good content strategy it's 20 percent actually writing and publishing the content and 80 percent promoting the content and you're already doing this you are uh, sharing on your social media profiles, which is great. Uh, but some other things that you might want to think about, instead of posting one article once and then waiting until the next article goes live and posting that, instead you might want to take one article and split it up to where you can uh, gain three or 30 different social media posts from that one article. That means that uh, you can keep your Facebook pages, your Facebook page and other social profiles uh, more up to date. And you, you just get more legs out of any one content asset. So I would highly recommend you do that and do it not only for Facebook, for, but for all of your different uh, social media platforms. Uh, second, I didn't see this on your website, so I'm not sure if you have already implemented implemented this or not, but you definitely want to create an email list. And this email list is, you know, is always going to be one of the first places where you should promote your content. Because even though they're coming from your email, their email, those people still count as website visitors. And when you publish a article and it starts getting visitors and you know social interactions very quickly. That's a positive signal to Google and other search engines that your content is good. And so what does Google do with good content? It ranks it higher than other other articles. So definitely want to promote it to your email list if you have one. And then finally, and this goes back to Facebook, but each social media channel has their own version. When you post the article and maybe it has a few likes, maybe it has a few shares, maybe it's able to uh, gather a few comments, then try doing a small paid campaign to boost the visibility of that post. Going back to what I just said about the social visibility, um, you know, when you start getting those uh, social interactions quickly, uh, when you publish something, it definitely can have a positive impact on your, on your rankings. So just consider that. And when I say a small, you know, maybe using five or 10 bucks to post it. And that's only for those articles that are getting some organic 
uh, organic interaction on, on, on social media. And so now that I'm talking about social media, this is a perfect segue to the fifth point I'm going to take over. And the first thing is, I noticed you're on a lot of different websites, but uh, you know, based on your demographic and you know, from what I read in the uh, in a in a in a survey, uh, you're targeting 25 to 30, 40 year olds who are learning to build an online business. They're college grads. They're more than likely, you know, working a corporate lifestyle. Um, I think LinkedIn would be a great place to capture some of these, capture some of your audience as well. Because it sounds like they would be hanging out there, and you know maybe you know you're not as heavily uh, involved on LinkedIn as maybe you are on Facebook or Pinterest, but maybe that's just another a place where you post your content. Uh, so highly recommended. Uh, LinkedIn can be a great uh, resource for for getting people who are interested in your content and your offerings, but also have the money to pay for it. So. Uh, the second thing for social media is your YouTube channel. And I must say, very good job, man. Um, I saw you have several YouTube videos. This is something I've been trying to ramp up in the last two months or so, just making more videos and, you know, trying to use that as a medium to get my content and brand out there. And you're already doing a really good job with that. So just some my tweaks I would recommend. Uh, from an SEO perspective, uh, you might want to consider... So from an SEO perspective, you want to consider embedding these videos somewhere on your website. So uh, this is the how to create a winning mindset video. Uh, what I would recommend, if you have anything related to creating a winning mindset or anything to that phrase winning mindset, go ahead and embed this video on that page. Uh, when you do that, um, obviously, that gives your readers another uh, way to consume your content, which adds to the uh, usability of that page and to your website. But that embed does help your SEO because I'm sure you know YouTube is a large search engine itself. It's actually the second largest behind Google. So someone might not find you through their website, but maybe they're watching you know, something from Robert Kiyosaki. Um, and then they see your video in the, the related video section and they're like, who is this guy? And so they click through your video and that's how they're introduced to your brand. So definitely um, that's one way you can get more, more legs from your YouTube videos. And kind of looking at your description here. So great job with this. I really like that you're, you know, actually has some, some, some content in your YouTube video description. Um, and you have links to your social media profiles. You have links to your Amazon, your products on Amazon. And you also have uh, links to other posts. So one other link I would add here is your the, the link to subscribe to your YouTube channel. Um, that's just, you know, when you're putting out videos, I'm sure you know how YouTube works. Every time you put out that video, uh, you're going to, that person is going to get a notification. So that's how you can drive uh, repeat viewers and repeat users to your YouTube videos. Um, you know, usually it takes someone seven or eight times before they fully align with your brand and, you know, purchase something that you offer. And so you always want to find ways to keep, keep, keep them coming back. So definitely, uh, you know, try to push subscribing to your YouTube channel. And so that wraps up social media. And then finally, podcasts. So I saw on your on your website you have um, a podcast section, which is which is great. Uh, this is something I want to do in the future, but yeah, I just have to make the time. Uh, but in case you weren't already thinking about some of these things, there are a lot of different ways you can leverage podcasts uh, because they are very versatile as a marketing asset. So first, of course, you can go out and get a transcript of the podcast. So if someone doesn't have time to listen, they can just read, you know, the, the, the content or the audio. And this can be more content added to your website. Um, you can also do what's called like a checklist or guide uh, from that podcast. So if there's something that, you know, a particular topic. Uh, I have one of them open here. Let me go back in here. 
so, so podcast with Mr. Burns. So how to travel the world and love your life. So in that, so of course you're going to have your transcript, but then you can have like a checklist or guide. So if someone was aiming to by January 2020, be ready to travel the world and have a career that will support them financially while they do, while they do it, you can put together like a little checklist or guide that walks them through month over month by month. What should they be doing to prepare for that, for that transition? And that could be, you know, a great content asset that can, you can use to build backlinks. Uh, but it's something that I saw work really well. There's one website I'll share with you. Uh, he does it really well. Pretty much after all of his podcasts, he has some type of, you know, checklist, uh, takeaways from this particular episode. And I think that would be a really good addition for you as well. And then finally, and this goes back to YouTube, you can get a video version of that podcast interview. And then, of course, you would add that, that podcast interview to your YouTube. And then as you are doing now, you would go ahead and, um, optimize it, uh, optimize the YouTube description for it. So that brings me to the end of the video. I uh, hope this has been helpful. Like I said, I will provide you reports from SEM Rush attached to the email. And I'll also give you kind of a high level summary of each area I covered in this video. And on top of that, I'll give you some links to some resources where I think will really help you to kind of go further with some of the things I discussed in the video. But thanks, Michael. I hope you uh, got something out of this, and I look forward to hearing from you. Take care.